Uh, so today, we're going to continue on our lectures, and first I'm going to draw some cartoons for you. Uh, and again, I, I, I made this point last time, that there's a picture I want you to have in your head. And that picture with these boxes, about how to think about this data. And so we're going to draw these boxes again. And uh, so, first I can sample a signal in time. And I can do time series analysis on it. So if I think about time, and I think about frequency, and if I just sample in time, what I have is great time resolution of that signal. But if I just think about time series, I have no frequency content information, right? It's just, I don't know what the frequencies are. I'm just looking at the time signal, OK? So that would be time series analysis kind of work, OK? Alternatively, what we talked about is I can put everything in the Fourier domain. I can just FFT it. I can capture all the frequency content. And when I do that, though, I lose sight of when were those frequencies actually in the signal, what, at what time? Right? When you Fourier transform in a time window, you lost any information about when the frequencies actually occurred, but you know all the frequencies that did occur. Okay? So in this picture, if you just Fourier transform or something like this, Now your information is represented like this. You have very good frequency resolution. You've lost all time. Okay? By the way, it's not necessarily bad. It's pretty good if you have a, a time signal that, you know, some kind of signal you're looking at whose frequency never changes. Okay? So for instance, for the radar problem, that might be exactly what you're looking for. It's like, I am looking for a specific frequency. I don't care about other frequencies. I don't care how they're shifting. There's only one frequency I care about, and that's all I want to care about and look at. And so I want to filter it, do whatever. So there's certainly a lot of applications where this is perfectly fine, or that's perfectly fine. Okay? Now, by the way, we're going to start thinking about the frequencies here as sort of low to high frequencies. Low frequencies, high frequencies. Now, in the idea of Gabor, or this short time Fourier wind transform, Right? The idea was to say, how about we trade? I'll get a little bit up of my time information to get a little bit of frequency information. Okay? So I'm not going to have quite as good time information or as good a frequency information that I could have, but I'll trade. I'll be somewhere in the middle, and so now I have time frequency information. And the way I did that right, was just by putting this little window on this thing and sliding it across. We'll talk more about that, too. And so what you got now is this picture like this, which is time and frequency information. Now, because of the time bandwidth product that you have that is constant with a Fourier transform, okay? so you have this idea of a Heisenberg uncertain, which is the width of the time signal and the width of the frequency signal, they're related by a constant, doesn't change. So in other words, the area of each one of these boxes has to stay constant. So, for instance, I could say, well, I want to sample a little more in time than in frequency. So if you squeeze this box this way, what's going to happen? If I serve the area, if you squeeze, you've got to go up like that. Think of it as a marshmallow. You go like this, it goes this way. Although I guess my marshmallow is compressible. So don't think of it as mar. Think of it as, well, anyway, you get what I'm saying. Think of it as a sack of water. If you squeeze like it, it goes, it goes somewhere else. Okay? So let me draw two pictures on top and bottom which is if you squeeze those this way, then you would pick up better res resolution in time at the expense of worse resolution and frequency. Okay? Or alternatively, you could say I could squeeze the other way. Uh, I'm going to squeeze it so it's, I get better resolution and frequency at the expense of worse in time. Okay? So I can take these boxes and squeeze them around. So this is what you got. Uh, and all of this is basically, how do I do, go from here to here? This is all about changing my window. That, that window that I slide across, I can make it fatter. I can make it narrower. Okay? 
Okay, so there's another idea, though. Since you already kind of have this concept in your head, let's envision the following kind of experiment, then. Let's take a signal. Whatever happens to be. And I'm going to basically now decide on a, a window. I'm going to slide across here. Okay. And I did not bring my colored pens today. So imagine this is red. Can you do it? Dude, the hookup, right in class, like that. You do? What color you got? All the regular ones. That is so awesome. Hey, he gets extra credit today. I don't know what you guys are thinking, but right there is extra. No. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Because <laughs> in my pocket these. Okay, ready? Nice, seriously, this is awesome. Okay. I'm going to draw a little window on this thing. Here it is. And this window slides over. I'm going to call this B. And it has some width A parametrized by two things, and then I'm going to slide it. Now, I know I can slide it and get different information, so how about I, how about I do the following, okay? And this is going to be the basis of what we're going to talk about today, which are wavelets. Here is the wavelet concept in a nutshell in a cartoon. I'm going to take this window, and the first thing I'm going to do with it, so first of all, let's talk about this window. If I pick a window of this size, the only frequencies that I can capture are frequencies that fit in that box, right? So I could do the following. I could take a very narrow box. And slide it across. What's that narrow box going to give me? So first of all, it gives me very nice time localization. And what it's going to capture is high frequencies. Right? I'm not going to get low-end frequencies out. But here's what I'm going to do. Why don't I just slide that little box across? And if I slide that across, I can get kind of all the high-frequency content pretty well localized in time. Right? And I'm going to now take that out of my signal. Then, after I do that, I'm going to do, let's say this has a width A. I'm going to take another box now and slide it across that has... 2A. Now I'm going to get it long, you know, high, lower frequencies, but I'm losing a little bit of the time here. Where, where did it happen? Okay, so high frequencies, good localization, now lower frequencies, less time. I'm able to predict less where it happens in time. And then I make a bigger box and a bigger box until I get to the full size. And every time I do it, I just subtract out that information. What does that look like from this box here perspective? So you see, it wasn't that I couldn't space it right with three boxes. I had a fourth box in mind. Thinking ahead, once in a while I do it. And sometimes it even works. OK. So here is the cartoon. And if you understand these are cartoons, you're, you're, you're in pretty good shape. So what did I do? So again, I told you to think about these frequencies here as low to high. And what I did is somehow is I sampled really well. I almost said really good, but I said really well, which is right. Okay, so I sampled really well in, in time for the high frequencies. In other words, that really small window, I got all the high frequencies. But because the time, right, because I have this Heisenberg uncertainty idea behind me, I, I've got a little bit, I, I can't quite pin down all the frequencies that well. I just know that I got high frequencies. Okay? But I've got them localized in time. I take that information out of my signal. Now, Subtract it out. Now I go and I say, now let's just double the band. Let's just double that window, and let's do the same thing. Well, okay. So I, that was a bad. Okay. So 
Uh, <laughs> I wanted eight rings here. All right, so, all right, so let me try to do this again so it actually comes out right. Okay. Now, since I'm taking a larger window, I'm less resolved in time, but better resolved in frequency. So you see how big this is? Well, now I'm a little bit less than that. And now I sample like this. So now my box is twice as big, and I get better frequency resolution. I guess I could have drawn this a little bit bigger. I'm trying to, uh, well, OK. I have a nice picture here in the notes. And then now I do is I double it again, like this. And again, this is supposed to be <laughs> bigger than this one here, and then finally like this. Here is the picture. OK, fine. Let's just pretend it's right. It's in the notes there, figure 94. That has all the information. This is the cartoon for wavelets. You understand this. You understand the ideas behind wavelets. What do you do? You draw your small little filter, sample out all your frequency components. You have a big error, big variance. So you can't really nail down all the frequency, but you know if you have high frequencies, you know exactly where they occurred in time or have a really good idea of it. Then now you say take a bigger window. Now I pull out all the frequency content here. Well, wait a minute. If that window's there, I have all these high frequencies. No, I don't. I took them out already when I sampled here. So what's left is frequencies below there. And now I sample where they are. My window's bigger, harder for me to localize in time where they are, but I get a little bit tighter frequency window here. Go over to here now. Now I have frequencies below this. So you know, I keep taking out all the high frequencies until all I have left over is low frequencies. And at the end of the day, I take a Fourier transform, if you want, of it, of the whole window. My window filter is as big as my domain, and it says, what's the frequency content in there? And by the way, I have no idea where it is in that window, but I'm getting all the low frequencies. This is often called a multi-resolution analysis. We're going to talk a lot more about it in the next lecture. That is the wavelet content.